So I've written down here some more conditions that are itchy. So uh, itchy eyes is another problem. So conjunctivitis is inflammation of the uh, conjunctiva, which is a see-through layer on the surface of the white part of the eye that you can see. So when you're looking at someone's eye, the white that you see is what's known as the sclera. However, that is covered, the bit that's visible to someone looking at a person, the bit that's visible on their face, um, that is covered by an invisible see-through layer called the conjunctiva, and that can get inflamed, and that's called conjunctivitis, and when it does, it turns a sort of reddy colour, and it gives the eye a pink colour. So conjunctivitis' other name is pink eye. Um, and there are different reasons that people can get conjunctivitis. One would be infection, so viruses can infect the conjunctiva, that's called viral conjunctivitis. Bacteria can infect the conjunctiva as well, that's worse, that's called bacterial conjunctivitis. But another very common cause of conjunctivitis is what's called allergic conjunctivitis. And usually the allergy is to pollen. So the pollen uh, is in the air and lands on the conjunctiva and then in someone who's allergic to that pollen the conjunctiva will respond by becoming inflamed so that's allergic conjunctivitis and that is part of hay fever so when you have an allergy to uh, grass pollen or tree pollen we call that hay fever. So allergic conjunctivitis would be overall one of the most common causes for someone to have conjunctivitis. Another uh, common cause is irritant conjunctivitis so if the conjunctiva becomes dried out, uh, it can become inflamed to the point that it appears pink, so conjunctivitis. Why might the conjunctiva become dried out? Well, one of the common reasons is drugs can cause this as a side effect. So the surface of the eye produces a natural lubrication, and lots of drugs can reduce the production of that natural lubrication and therefore can lead to dry eyes and if that dry eyes become severe enough it can lead to an irritant conjunctivitis. So those are some of the common causes of conjunctivitis. Now conjunctivitis can be really really itchy um, and again itching does not help. If you itch it you're going to make the inflammation even worse and you again risk one introducing infection into your eye and two damaging your eye from scratching it. So itching is not a desirable thing. Uh, and again, if the person cannot control the desire to itch with willpower, then antihistamines are a good idea to stop the itch, or at least reduce the itch sensation to stop the person doing themselves damage by itching their eyes. Another really itchy condition is rhinitis in some, condition, in some circumstances. So rhinitis means inflammation of the lining of the nose. And again, there are lots of different causes for this. The common one would be just getting a cold. So a viral infection of the upper respiratory tract, often the first place it infects is the lining of the inside of the nose. So that's called viral rhinitis. And often viral rhinitis wouldn't be an itchy condition. However, another common reason that people can get inflammation there is again hay fever. So an allergy to pollen, that can then uh, cause the mucosal surface on the inner part of the nose to react to the pollen that's being breathed in and become inflamed. And allergic rhinitis is usually a very itchy condition and means that people are often wanting to itch their nose or scratch the tip of their nose. Uh, and again, if they can't control that, it's a good idea to reduce the itch sensation because again, they might actually excoriate uh, the skin on the surface of their nose so badly that it might scar or be it might become infected. So overall I hope I've convinced you that there are a lot of itchy conditions. Itching, scratching is never a good idea. It doesn't help any of the conditions even though it feels that it does and therefore taking an antihistamine if the person can't control their scratching with willpower is a good idea. Now the big side effect of taking antihistamines is that they can be very sedating, they can make you very tired, very dopey, less alert, you know, less able to do things requiring a large amount of powerful brain function. Um, now that said, there are two generations, two main generations of antihistamines. There are first generation antihistamines and then there are second generation antihistamines. First generation 
antihistamines are the old antihistamines, and these are all incredibly strong, very good anti-itch tablets, but they're also incredibly sedating. Usually, if you give someone a first-generation antihistamine, within an hour they will be yawning and they will want to go to bed. The second-generation antihistamines were, are the newer ones, and they are less good at getting through the blood-brain barrier. So they work on the rest of the body, but then they don't get into the brain as well as the first generation ones. And therefore they are nowhere near as bad at causing the drowsiness, making people want to go to sleep. So really, we're not going to go into the first generation ones in this video. We're going to concentrate on the second generation ones because you, you first of all, if someone comes to you needing help with stopping their itching, you start with second generation antihistamines, you would not start with first generation ones. If the second generation ones don't work, then you could consider going on to the first generation ones. But you need to discuss this problem that they're going to be incredibly sedating with them. So I've written down the main three second generation antihistamines, loratadine, cetirizine and fexofenadine, and this is actually in the order of strength of these drugs. So loratadine is probably the weakest one, its anti-itch effect is the weakest. It would be the first line treatment, so if someone hasn't tried any antihistamines at all, you'd start with loratadine. If then that isn't effective enough, and they're still itching despite taking the loratadine, then you would change loratadine to cetirizine. It's stronger. And then if cetirizine still is not controlling the itch, then you would go up to fexofenadine, which is the strongest of the second generation antihistamines, and probably one of the strongest of all the antihistamines that exist. It's an excellent drug, fexofenadine, but cetirizine is very strong also. Most people's itch will be controlled by cetirizine. A warning about them, even though their sed sedating properties are much less than the first generation antihistamines, some people will still feel very tired after taking these drugs, especially the first time they take it. So often, um, if you've never taken an antihistamine before, even if you just start off with loratadine, you may feel tired after taking it. Usually, however, with the second generation ones, the tiredness gets better as you continue to take it, so as your body gets more used to it, the tired effect often goes away to the point that, you know, after a week of maybe taking daily loratadine, it may be the case that even though the first tablet made you very, very sleepy, after a week, you know, it's not having any sedating properties on you anymore. So people often find these drugs um, very tolerable, even though potentially initially they might find that they do have this drowsy effect on them. Now, m a lot of these second generation antihistamines, two of them in fact, in the UK, are not prescription-only medicines. In fact, they're easily available over the counter, both loratadine and cetirizine, so our star of the show, they are both uh, over-the-counter medicines. You don't even need to go to a pharmacy and get a pharmacist to sell you them. You can buy them on the supermarket shelves, at least in the UK. In the UK, fexofenadine is a prescription-only medicine. You have to have a prescription to be able to get it. In other countries, however, such as the United States, fexofenadine is also an over-the-counter medicine that can be bought, uh, I believe, in supermarkets. I've never been to America, so I can't confirm that from first-hand experience, but I believe you can buy it in supermarkets.